One year ago I started making country guides for Europa Universalis 4 and Bavaria was my first nation to cover. In honor of that, today we'll be doing another Bavaria guide updated for the 1.31 version of Europa Universalis 4. And I am going to start as Landshut because Landshut has a better starting situation and is quite a little bit stronger. Ave Legionnaires and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi and I am your average Werabu enjoyer which includes the yodeling part of the German nation. In today's video, the plan is to unify Bavaria and then get personal unions over on Brandenburg, Palatinat and other nations around the HRE. We also will be showing why Bavaria is such a strong playing toll tag. So let's start our adventure as Landshut, Iron Man mode. Bravaria bros and let's go if we also get 5,000 likes on this video I'm gonna do the mid game guide for the nation of Bavaria Bavaria in 1444 starts divided in three separate entities We have Ingolstadt, Landshut and München The strongest of the three is actually Landshut because of its size and because it starts with a really good leader and heir That being said we will be getting personal union CBs on both Ingolstadt and München within the first few months which we will use to form the nation of Bavaria since all we need is to have the other two nations in a PU under us nothing else before we get to that point however we're gonna be doing our estates we gave the plus one admin and military in order to give the diplo one we're gonna be setting the encouraged development edict in our state here and we will be developing actually in Bayern is cheaper by one point we're gonna be developing this one once and that means we can give the plus one Diplo as well, there you go. It also means we can sell titles right after this and we are going to be developing this another time. Again, only 45 because we got the minus 7.5 dev cost reduction from having sold the titles. After we do that, we're going to be seizing lands and that means we got 0.20 autonomy monthly rather than 0.30 and we will be getting a lot more of this crown lands in the next few years. Take note, you also want to give the supremacy over the crown to increase your equilibrium for loyalty for all three estates and you also want to give out the minus 25 advisor cost privileges for all three of these I normally give this out after a few years which is why I don't really show it in my guides but I always do give out the minus 25 diplo advisor cost admin and military advisor cost because it actually does help quite a bit also get a morale of armies or discipline if you can advisor production efficiency is great too diplo advisor or trade efficiency is great but improved relations is a backup in case you don't have any of the other guys available or if they are too expensive so what we're gonna do next is something that is very important you want to ally the Austrians but 90% of the time it's gonna be really hard to get them in an alliance so we want to get a royal marriage to actually secure our diplo slot with them this way we don't get the too many diplo slots debuff with the Austrians we also want to recruit the free company so we go up to our maximum land force limit this also increases our chances of Austria actually wanting to ally us, but it is not guaranteed. You want to set Ingolstadt, München, and Salzburg as your rivals, so you give the idea of whoever wants to be your ally that you don't want them to ally these three nations. Do remember that they can still ally those three nations, so be careful. A good alliance early on is actually the Swiss, but make sure they're not rival to the Austrians, because if that's the case, and if Austria rival them, then that's going to be a bit of an issue, but in my case, they rival Austria not the other way around 9 to February 45 and we got the PU on both München and Ingolstadt so that means we're gonna be attacking them I've also been improving relations with the Austrians and I did scornfully insult their rivals which gave me 25 extra relations with them with this PU restoration CB I'm gonna attack the weakest of these two nations first and the other one to follow afterwards I'm lucky because they're both weak as schnitzel so it doesn't make much of a difference to be honest all right we're also going to get a few generals in here actually one if we get a uh, siege pip is perfect we didn't get a siege pip because why would we ever get one right we're going to use the other army to siege down vasa bug and after one month we're going to declare on munchen also i've also allied the saxons and the nation of trier i can also ally a few more electors around here which is why i have a few nations backing me to become the emperor but it's not a big deal for the time being we're just going to focus on getting our uh, pus over ingol 
Kolstadt and uh, Munchen. Make sure you start getting a claim on Salzburg as well since we want to attack Salzburg after we've uh, unified the nation here. You can also crush the enemy army before they manage to recruit any more extra troops, making this war extremely easy for everybody here. We can also attack at the same time the nation of Munchen. They have a few extra troops but it's not a lot of extra troops. It should be a fairly easy war as well against them. It is important in these wars that you crush the enemy armies before they actually manage to get any bigger because that will eventually happen and when it comes to the estate statutory do not accept that that is actually really rubbish after you've dealt with the enemy armies it's just a matter of sieging this stuff down and remember that taking these two forts is easy because they're just a capital fort but this one actually is a proper fort so you need to have more than uh, just 3,000 troops that means focus on finishing these two guys first and then send the rest of your army to munition to siege it down that's also why you want to build a spy network in the nation of munich to get more siege ability you actually don't need 100 percent to get the union so i'm gonna peace out ingolstadt since i got their capital i just need 60 percent to get the union with ingolstadt and it only gets me six aggressive expansion that is literally almost nothing so now it really is just about sieging down these two forts in uh, munition and their vassal here passau you also can start by getting our claim in a few more months on uh, Salzburg, and that's going to end up with us in a war against Salzburg and Regensburg, which is a free city, and that means I cannot directly attack them, but I can attack their ally and uh, annex them also for a little bit of extra aggressive expansion. Holy mother of freaking sieges, man. 855 freaking days. I was going to put the title of Form Bavaria in two years, which is doable, but hey, no, we cannot do that. We have to put form Bavaria in three years because München doesn't want to fall in any case we got the union over München we're gonna get some money as well there you go max money peace them out noise now we can do the Bavarian nation there you go inherit the other two thrones and we have managed to form it in just three years from the start date we also can do this for the time being it's a good mission by the way make sure you make everything here a full state also and we're gonna get some new rivals of course we're gonna go for Regensburg and we're also gonna go for the nation Augsburg oh my god so many nations we also managed to get the uh, nation of Passau as a vassal because it was a vassal of our PU member and we can now attack the uh, Salzburgi and even new rivals oh okay so we cannot get Salzburg as a rival let's go with Nuremberg Württemberg and sure let's actually go with the Palatinat since I do have a mission that involves the Palatinat I need to have 10 cities in Bavaria in order to to uh, get a PU over the Palatinat, and that is exactly Salzburg and a Regensburg. So let's go. We're not going to co belligerate these guys because then Austria is going to join. So it's just going to be us against Salzburg and Regensburg. Booyah. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Oh, this is going to be so fun, and it's going to be such an easy war. Also, it's not going to give us too much aggressive expansion because we actually have only about seven aggressive expansion with everybody in the HRE. There you go. Despite taking such a massive amount of land, we got three aggressive expansion. With nations in the HRE. Jesus Christ. Despite having a massive spy network in Salzburg, the city of Regensburg fell first, so we're gonna fully annex them. It's gonna be a lot of aggressive expansion because you did not co this, but do annex it whenever you get the chance because you do absolutely need to have 10 cities to continue your mission tree, so we want to get that and we want to start coring it up after we've gotten it whilst we uh, keep on sieging Salzburg here. Also, remember to use the free company when sieging down forts capital forts only need 3,000 units so the free company at the very start is absolutely perfect for that that means you only waste the manpower from the free company's pool not your actual country's manpower pool so your main army here is super super safe and I just realized that I had another 6,000 units just randomly sitting there I guess these were units that Munchen had which uh, they were hiding away in those lands Jesus Christ it is now time to peace out salty also and no coalition whatsoever as well as we are increasing our crownlands with each province that we take for the greater Bavarian nation we can get new rivals also before we do that we're gonna get the alliance with the Austrians which lowers the chance of them asking us to return on lawful territory we're gonna also do a few more things here we're gonna go for Bohemia as a rival especially since Bohemia rival the Austrians and there's a chance that Austria is gonna rival them back once Savoy gets 
weaker and we also will be doing the same with Savoy we're gonna make them our rival and we're doing our mission that gives us a PU on the nation of the Palatinate with this we can restore the Union over the nation of Palatinate making us one of the most ridiculously strong nations in South Germany it's your choice if you want to call in allies I feel like it's not really necessary to call in any allies because I have a strong enough army for this so I'm gonna go with the Union restoration CB let's go and uh, we're at war with a few nations in South Germany shouldn't be much of an issue really make sure that you keep your armies close together however you don't want to be uh, picked up by the enemy armies one by one so have at least 10,000 units in each of your armies to make it strong enough to avoid direct engagement from the enemy armies also ensure that your vassal attaches itself to one of your armies and you're absolutely good to go also we can get a uh, spy network in the palatinate right after we've declared a war or you can start it even before you declare the war if you want to you know what i'm actually going to call the saxon in so they can help me against uh Würzburg because i don't have access to that area until i siege down Heidelberg so they are actually going to come in very handy for that particular situation there because they did not expect us to attack them we took Oberfalz in uh, 31 days since they didn't actually maintain the garrison and that means we can focus our units on Wurzburg now which also means I probably shouldn't have called in the Saxons in hindsight because now I have to share the loot with the Saxons and nobody wants to share the loot with the Saxons Wurzburg has fallen and we're going to piece them out we don't really want anything from them I'm just going for trade power war reps and a little bit of cash I'm focusing mostly on war reps and trade power because my ally Saxony is gonna get a cut of the money so I don't want them to get much of anything really because I'm a mean and horrible ally that's why man that's why all right we also managed to siege down Heidelberg so that means we're pretty close to piecing out Palatinat as well can we enforce the Union not yet we just need a little bit more that means just sieging down Fals and uh, Zweibrücken oh actually I still need to siege down uh, Strasbourg because they're also in the war and I completely forgot about them Hans get the flamen the Bavarians are coming. Wait, isn't Hans Bavarian as well? I'm confused. What is happening in the HRE? Oh God, imagine a disunited Germany today. Am I right? Oh God. And Strasbourg's down. That means we can uh, piss them out. There you go. We pissed them off. And uh, we're going to be uh, piecing out these guys also. We actually can enforce our union now. And we can also get a bit of cash from that. Which means we got a coalition of the Palatinat. So really, it's not much of a big deal. <laughs> there you go. We got our union. That means means we can also do this mission that has a chance of having the emperor transfer the electoral ship to us that means they take it from the palatinate and give it to us also it's a chance so it's not guaranteed hey we became the elector i guess we were very very lucky and there you go we can cast the electoral ship on <laughs> oh i'm voting for myself yes i'm that guy i'm that guy i also like my own videos hey i got a achievement from this oh my god I I am electable everybody oh dear lord all right now we can come back and we can also pay off some of our loans here you might have been wondering why i have so much money because i got the um one percent burger loans these are amazing it's these guys over here because you basically don't pay almost anything in interest it's as if you have free money essentially we can also seize some more land now it's gonna give us a little bit of a rebellion but it's not a big deal there you go we can just kill off the rebellion and we don't have any more autonomy problems which means means that essentially we have no problems whatsoever bring our boys back home we also should have enough land force limit now no we still need four more land force limit that's fair we're gonna get another vassal in Augsburg anyway we're gonna vassalize them because of the aggressive expansion that we have right now and uh we're also gonna be calling in Milan and Brigance in this war but before we do declare that war we gotta manage our country a little bit and do a little bit of diplo around the empire also we're gonna get a new rival here we're likely yeah you know what we're gonna go with the Venetians and um wow nobody rivaled us we're such a nice people right nobody wants to rival we're also going to be gunning for some of these guys here why do these guys have such bad relations with us i don't know why but um uh, i'm gonna improve relations with them i'm also gonna improve relations with uh, the palatinate because if they have bad relations with me once my king dies and he's 66 then uh i'm gonna lose the union so it's important that you get good relations with the palatinate before that happens actually the mercenary company has very little manpower available in its manpower pool so i'm 
I'm going to disband them and I'm going to recruit them again in 20 years. So they this way they get the uh, full amount of manpower once I recruit them a second time. And I also fix my economical problems since I'm not over the force limit anymore because of disbanding the mercenaries. So I skipped forward a little bit into the future because I managed to get the uh, relations with the Palatinat above zero, which means that even if my main guy here dies, I'm still going to keep the personal union. Also, I wanted to wait for a little while to get my aggressive expansion a little bit down since I would not be otherwise able to vassalize the nation of Augsburg since I have a little bit of extra aggressive expansion for the time being. I'm going to call Trier and Switzerland into this to make it a little bit easier and I'm going to rush for Augsburg followed by uh, piecing out the Milanese and Brigands as well. I only want to vassalize Augsburg and I'll just take cash from the other two nations. Really not much of uh, anything else. Because this is a level 1 capital fort, it's quite easy to siege down. And uh, similarly, Brigands is also very easy to siege down because of that. Which means we can just focus on the Milanese now as the other two nations are literally dead. I've taken one siege from uh, the Milanese and I'm going to piece them out because I really don't want to be in this war at all. I'm going to come back with this army so I can get ready for the next wars. My main focus actually after I vassalize the nation of Augsburg is going to be Austria and Bohemia as well as Köln. Why? Well, that's frankly just because we can get a PU on the nation of Brandenburg by owning the city of Köln ourselves and we can get a PU on the nation of Austria by owning two cities within the Tyrol province directly. That means we can take Intal and uh, Echtal, which is pretty fairly low aggressive expansion and it is also a gold mine from the Austrians. We also want to take Keb, which is another gold mine from the Bohemians. We will definitely prioritize the Austrians. That being said, it is going to be a lot easier taking the Keb gold mine first. So regardless of whatever we do, we still have to wait for a little while because we have a lot of aggressive expansion for the time being and we want to wait for that to go down a little bit. So we piece these guys out. Now we're going to go with uh, Augsburg. One day passed. There you go. And vassalize. This is 19 aggressive expansion. It's actually quite a lot of aggressive expansion. But as you can see, coalition wise, nobody would. We're going to also cancel some rivalries to get some extra prestige, which is always going to come in handy. And that's pretty much it. We have a second vassal, which means that we can get the uh, strong duchies modifier or privilege, which gives us an extra two diplo relation slots. And we can also take some more lands, seize lands another time, kill off the rebels. And we are now at 26% crown lands. Bring our, the rest of our armies home. And all we got to do now is just wait for the AE to go down a bit and whenever we're ready attack Kjoln that's going to be the first target since it's really easy to get that city and to get the PU over the Brandenburgians afterwards and after that we can attack the Austrians or Bohemians depending on whichever is going to be easier in fact you know what I'm going to get my claims on Bohemia in the meantime since I don't have those claims just yet I'm going to cancel this one here we can also pay off all the loans that we have and we have a positive economy finally guys a really good piece of advice is to always have at least one of your diplomats improving relations with outrage nations you do this by going here and assigning here as many diplomats as you want to assign i can assign two of them but i need one right now because remember how we got the claims on this area here well it looks like we can have a very easy war against berg so i'm gonna attack them because of that and i'm gonna start going for their capital over here we also can get our first idea set and as the bavarians it is a little bit of a tricky question what should be your first idea because you can both play super tall as the Bavarians since you have a lot of great farmlands and grasslands around your country as well as you have a lot of massive modifiers for playing tall but you also will be able to get Austrian PU, Brandenburg PU, a few other PUs here and there and in order to integrate those it would be good to have influence ideas. However we don't need influence ideas for the early game and whoever tells you that you want to get influence to integrate these nations early game is wrong since you can only integrate PUs after after at least 50 years. That means we're going to go for quantity first and economic second, followed much later by either influence or trade based on how many subjects we have that we need to integrate, or even diplomatic since that helps out a lot with the extra two diplomats. When choosing your government reforms, always go for the manpower as your second reform if you're a monarchy, and as the third one, I recommend you go for the monthly autonomy change. It helps out so much, especially in the early game, and the other one is absolutely useless unless you're going for a world conquest and it's not a one culture world conquest. The reason for this is because once we become an empire every German culture is going to be 
be accepted because we cannot make this province a core we're gonna be vassalizing Berg and because we vassalize them we also can feed them back the cores they have on the nations of Gelre and uh, Munster there you go quite a few cores that we can go for before we go for those cores we are gonna be attacking Köln we also will be calling in a Switzerland and Trier and it should be a very very easy war and fast war also so let's attack these nations here we're gonna set a general in charge of this that you go and make sure that we get the siege before our enemies get the sieges we can peace out the allies of Köln since we sieged them down already we're gonna go for a little bit of cash of course not much of anything else when it comes to mains I'm actually gonna give one province to the nation of Trier because I might just vassalize mains later because they got a core on Trier and another one on Air Force. so it is definitely a great choice for a diplomatic vassal later down the line taking over the uh, Kiln capital is going to be an issue however since it is a lot of development and it's going to give me a ton of aggressive expansion so I might have to actually sit on this for quite a little bit of time I've literally been at war since the start of this campaign and my air is a uh, six diplomacy one admin and one military are you serious what has this little kid learned from my experiences nothing he hasn't learned anything all right we waited long enough we actually managed to bring the coalition that would potentially form against us to manageable levels since most of these we already have a truce with we are taking the city of Köln and Dario Go now we can do our next mission which is the Sway Köln Dario Go as well that means we got the PU restoration over the nation of Brandenburg and Brandenburg is actually very easy to take right now but we're gonna be um, improving relations a little bit with them hopefully that's gonna get us the uh, alliance which in turn means that we have about a 15% chance of getting the inheritance ourselves and that would be just next level gotta be honest this was a fairly easy war as most of them were anyway so i'm gonna peace out Ansbach first i'm only gonna go for cash and all that jazz because i don't want to get the aggressive expansion for just taking a freaking eight development province i mean come on bro same here with the nation of Goslar, just taking all the financial stuff we can and i'm canceling a few of their alliances and treaties and when it comes to the amazing nation of uh, brundenberg which let's face it is the most beautiful thing you could ever imagine in U4. We are going to do something that not many people are going to enjoy watching. So, as you can see, <laughs> enforcing the union is a lot of aggressive expansion, meaning we get a big coalition. But we can give a few provinces to Saxony, lowering the aggressive expansion that we get, which in turn means that we get a reconquest CB against the Saxons to use later down the line. So, overall, this is probably the best case scenario available to us that you go we got a Brandenburg in a union by the way this tactic works as Bohemia as well Bohemia has a mission to get a P over Brandenburg also you can use the same tactic give Lance either Saxony Volga Stetten whichever other ally you attack them with that has a border with Brandenburg so just within the first 20 years of the game <laughs> we managed to get a hold of most of South Germany parts of West and Northeast Germany remember we started as a three province minor guys <laughs> and we still don't have any coalition against us even though some nations could form it we are improving relations continuously with most nations and speaking of we're gonna integrate these guys now as well as we're gonna use our Berg vassals course to attack other nations it is important that you attack nations because this way if you have a truce with these nations they're not gonna be able to join in a coalition against you we're also okay from a technological point of view and we already even got our first idea unlocked massive change of plans after literally one second i just realized i can attack bohemia with the austrians joining in that war so i'm essentially gonna let the uh, austrians do all the work for me and i'm gonna get the keb gold mine in this war also i'm gonna be able to get some pp since it's pretty low as i haven't attacked any of my rivals in quite a little bit of time let's go we set the war target and we are gonna be crushing the bohemians with the help of the austrians make sure to assign objectives to your vassals and your allies and so on so they can siege these things down whenever they are able to and they use this army to kill Württemberg as well do remember the AI has a mind of its own so <laughs> even though I told them to siege this stuff down they're clearly doing everything except what I told them to do it is still a feature and it does still work sometimes but don't expect it to work all the time because that's really not the case sadly in fact I lost most of my war score because the Austrians kept sending 3,000 3,000 units again and again losing every single battle continuously and that is ridiculously annoying
annoying, I have to say. There you go. I have to do this myself. have to siege everything myself because there's just no way around it, unfortunately. We can also do this now. That is beautiful. Well, we do have the worst court to peace out, Bohemia. I am going to take Keb. I'm even going to give the province of Trenchin back to Hungary, which will make the Austrians very happy with me. Not that I really care about that very much. But anyway, I'm also getting the humiliation and war reparations. And coalition-wise, surprisingly, not that many nations would join in this coalition against me, considering that I now possess the gold mine and I am filthy rich. So with this taken, we have one goal left, aside from feeding back our uh, vassals its course, namely PUing the Austrians. Before we do that, however, we also want to get a claim on uh, the throne of Denmark, since they have the same dynasty as us from the beginning, and this is actually a little bit more of a priority, since getting the Danish throne before they lose the Swedish and the Norwegian PUs means that we can get three PUs for the price of one, essentially. To make that happen, however, we really need to get a royal marriage with them, and right now they got too many diplomatic relation slots. In fact, they've had too many diplomatic relations since the very beginning of the game, so I need to wait and uh, bide my time for that, similarly to how I'm biding my time with the Burgundians. I would love to do a second part for this, guys, so if you want to see a second part where we PU, Austria, Burgundy, and all of the Nordic countries, then leave a like. If we get 5,000 likes, I'm gonna do the 1470s to 1500s part for Bavaria. And if you guys are interested, you can also watch me live over on Twitch. I do almost daily streams. I I'd be more than happy to see you guys over there. I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well as my Twitch subscribers. Thank you so much guys for all the support. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you.